Hey everyone, so I just watched Christopher Nolan's new movie, Tenant, and I wanted to make a video kind of explaining a few of the scenes that really confused me. I'm talking about the car chase scene and also the attack scene in the very end. So if you are also confused like me, try watching this video and see if it clears up some of the timeline for you. Um, and if you haven't watched the movie, this there will be major spoil spoilers here. So uh, don't watch this video unless you've watched the movie. So diving right into the, the car chase scene, Talonin, um, just like the movie, um, red indicates forward movement in time, basically normal passage of time. And then blue is when uh, is when time is inverted, right? So nothing really controversial or confusing happens after Neil. So Neil and uh, the protagonist, they successfully steal the last piece of the algorithm and then they get into their BMW and then they start, you know, driving off. And then the first thing that happens is they encounter an inverted Seder in an Audi. Um, and in the car, he has Cat with him. Um, the strange thing is Cat is not inverted you can tell because she's not wearing the the breathing mask and if you're inverted uh, you have to wear the breathing mask so you can tell she's not inverted he is and um and then they get into this you know basically satyr threatens him saying that he will kill her unless he gives him the the box right um and then he so he ends up giving say so the protagonist gives satyr the algorithm and then Seder gets in this car and drives off, leaving Cat to die in the Audi. Um, then the protagonist basically saves Cat the last minute, um, but then they get into this gunfight where they're captured by Seder's men. Okay, um, here's where it gets kind of weird because after they get captured, you are in the perspective of the protagonist. He gets brought into this. Um, he gets brought into the turnstile inverter room where he witnesses Cat getting shot and he witnesses Seder talking backwards. Um, so what's going on here, I'm going to explain it later, but he's witnessing what an inverted Seder is going to do later. And what's going on here is that why, and then you might be like, it's confusing because Cat is wearing a mask. She's wearing a mask because she's on the other side, the blue side of the inverter. And on that side, the air is inverted. So you, uh, if you're not inverted, you can't breathe. And that's why Seder gives her the mask to wear so that she can breathe even though she's not inverted. In fact, Cat is never inverted in this entire um, timeline until the, until the end when when they try to save her, okay? So after they interrogate her, Seder is about, at the end, he's about to shoot, you know, protagonist in the head, and um, he's, and the protagonist is saved by Captain Ives and the backup, right? They come in, they storm in, and they save, um, they save the protagonist, and Seder, witnessing this, uh, jumps into the turnstile inverter, and he comes out the other side. Now his time, now, now we're dealing with inverted Seder here. Okay, so inverted Seder sees Cat uh, sitting in the chair, okay? And, and then he shoots her, okay? The reason why he shoots her is that he wants to make sure, he wants to threaten the protagonist because he can see him from the other side of the glass and make sure that, um, that uh, he's telling the truth about where, um, where he hid the algorithm, okay? Um, so obviously, Seder knows how this whole thing works because after he shoots her, then he grabs her and drags her to the car. Now, this part is really confusing because you, normally you're like, after he shot her, how can, why, is she, why isn't she bleeding out? Um, you know, why isn't she dying? And that's because Cat, remember, Cat is not inverted. She's going normal time. She's, her passage of time is red. Okay, so after she's shot here, she isn't bleeding out here, right? Because that's inverted time. Her her time is normal, so she's bleeding out over over here in normal passage of time. So after he shot her, he knows that she's not going to bleed out because she hasn't incurred the wound yet. So he drags her into the car, 
Okay, and he drives off in his Audi, and he goes on to intercept、uh, the protagonist and Neil. So, so obviously Sater has a lot of experience, you know, with the inverter. He knows what's going on. He goes off, and then he he basically、um, intercepts them because having already received the knowledge of what happens here at the end, right? And this is what they call a temporal pincer, where using the You know, because you have knowledge,、um, then you go back in time, and then you, and then you、um, basically get what you want. But remember, so in the Christopher Nolan's Tenant in this universe, they subscribe to basically there's only one reality. Okay, it's not the type of time travel or inversion where he can go back in time and like change past events. Because Neil says it multiple times in the movie, what's happened. What's happened has happened. You can't. What's so basically? There's only one version of reality, and、um, it's not like there's multiple, you know, multiple versions out there. It's there's this one true reality out there, okay? And what's happened has happened. So hopefully this clears it up. Obviously, I'm missing the part where like the protagonist then doesn't. He thinks he can change the. Pass right, and then he gets into the sob, and then he tries to like change. He tries to go after them, and then nothing really changes. And he's like, "Oh, okay, what's happened has happened."、Um, but that part is not really confusing, I think. So I'm gonna leave that out.、Um, so the second part scene that's really kind of confusing is、um, is the the final scene. The The attack, the the attack on、um, on Salsk Twelve, right? So,、um, if you're watching it like chronologically, you're, you'll be super confused. But what I did was there is actually one kind of anchoring point that you, this one starting point in in this whole、um, in this whole、um, scene is that if you remember at exactly、um, five minutes into the attack. So first of all, you, you know the idea of the temporal pincer, where the blue team,、um, the blue team is、uh, attacking, you know, with they're inverted, and the red team is attacking in regular time, right?、Um, and to really kind of anchor what's going on is that five minutes, both the blue team and the red team, they fire a RPG at a building, okay, and then and then the building blows up, right? So because you know that. At exactly five minutes on their watch, they fired the RPG. You know for a fact that the red team started the mission five minutes ago, and the red team is in normal time. So, arbit. Let's just pick an arbitrary number. So let's say they, the red team started the mission at one o'clock. At one o five, they fired the RPG at the building. Now, inversely, because you know the blue team is inverted, you know that if they fired the RPG five minutes into the mission, they must have started. Their mission at 110, okay, because they started in the future, moving backwards, right? So, you know that blue team starts at 110, and red team starts at one, and this makes sense because if you remember, at red teams、uh, when they just start the mission, they notice the blue guys going into the containers because the blue guys have finished their mission. Every, both their missions are 10 minutes long, so they the blue guys have finished their mission, and then. Remember when the blue guys start their mission? They notice the red guys going into the helicopters because the red guys' mission is ten minutes long. And they just finished two, right? So this is all pretty consistent. So、um, the first event that's kind of significant is that after they fire the RPG at 105, right after that, the、um, the Splinter team, so the protagonist and Captain Ives,、uh, runs into the、um, runs into the the tunnel. And then there was a booby trap in the tunnel, and the tunnel basically collapses. Right. So here's where it gets interesting. They. So this is where we're gonna start. So the tunnel collapses. Captain Ives and、uh, protagonist. They're in, they're in normal time. They notice this dead body、um, on the ground. That the gate's locked. They notice this dead body. Okay. And then the dead body like takes a bullet. And then they, you know, struggle with the、uh, the Russian henchman guy, and they 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 throw him down the shaft or whatever, and then they get rescued. So all this is happening in normal time. They get rescued by、um, a random rope that comes down, and、uh, basically drags them out. And then 
basically they, they find out it was Neil who rescued them. They split up the algorithm, you know, go their separate ways. Um, and then Neil reveals that, oh, he has to go back. So the, the real kind of confusion here um, is the character Neil, okay? Because everyone else is going about, the whole team, the whole red team is going about their normal um, forward motion in time. The whole blue team is going about their backwards motion in time. They're doing the temporal pincer. The only person who um, is doing something unique is the character Neil. Okay, so that's how we're going to spend time on Neil. So we'll start from the beginning. So Neil is on, he starts off on the blue team. He's the inverted team going backwards in time. And the first thing he does is um, he, you know, he makes it to the five minute mark where he sees the RPG blow up the building. And then right after that, um, so this is uh, right after that, going inverted time, he noticed the Russian guy booby trapping the tunnel, right? So then he, this is where he realizes, uh-oh, something is wrong because he's smart. He realizes that this is actually, um, you know, backwards in time. So this is before they go into the tunnel. He, he, so he's like, oh, shoot, something's wrong. I have to do something. So he runs to the... Um, the turnstile. So conveniently, the bad guys had a um, inverter just like on site, and they. So he gets into the inverter, and then he inver he he inverts his inverted self. So now he's going about normal time. Okay, he's going about normal passenger time. He he like hijacks a Humvee, and then he tries to warn the protagonist and Ives that the tunnel is booby trapped, but he's not successful. And in fact, if you remember, right before they run into the tunnel, they hear like this car honking, right? They hear the Humvee honking. And then so he's not successful and he goes, okay, well, um, I got to do something else. So because he knows that they're trapped in there and if they're trapped with the algorithm, then the whole mission fails, right? So he basically then saves them by dropping the, the rope down. He drops the rope down into the uh, into the mine shaft or whatever, and then he drags them out, and then he saves them. Okay, um, but then at the end of the movie, when he's talking to uh, the protagonist, he reveals that well, you know, he has to go back. He has to go back because you know he has to go unlock the door. In fact, Ives knows this because remember they did a temporal pincer. And Ives probably already knows what happens before because, you know, the blue guys, they finished their mission and they've come back to report what happened. Well, and Neil's, you know, he's not there. So Ives and then there's a line in the movie where Ives where Neil asks Ives, well, I'm, I'm the, probably the only guy who can go back and unlock that gate. And Ives says, well, you're the best, you know, you're the best lock pick I know. So I think Ives knows that Neil has to go back to his doom. And uh, Neil knows this as well. He, he knows he has to go back basically to his death. And that's, you know, it, it's possible that he knew this be because, because Neil and the protagonist meet way, you know, way later in the future. And the protagonist already knows this too. So he might have told him, but anyways, Basically, um, after he drops the rope and saves them, Neil then, um, in forward time, finds the inverter, right? He goes back to the turnstile inverter. He inverts himself. Um, he runs back into the, um, into the, uh, into the tunnel. Um, and then he unlocks the door, takes the bullet, and basically, you know, saves the whole mission. So, so I mean, that's, that's basically the timeline of, the ending scene. I mean, what what a performance by um, by the actor for Neil, right? Like that was a. I mean, that was probably the great, but the best scene from the movie. But but yeah, so I think that's that's what happens in both of the the most confusing scenes. Um, and I think to get, wrap your head around it, you just have to remember that there's only one version of reality. Like no events are changing because someone went back or forwards in time, um, reality is there. There's only one version, you know, it is what it, what's happened has happened. And after you accept that, then the movie is much easier to understand. So yeah, thanks for watching and hopefully it's helpful.